This time on Thrift Minis, I'm going to show you how I made these post-apocalyptic shacks. These are actually really easy to make and you can use a lot of leftover materials from other projects. So you see the base of this is just pieces of foam. See it's just junk leftovers hot glued together. And you can use something like a cardboard box and other pieces in combination to sell the idea that this is a house. You see I save all my scraps from other projects. So I'm going to show you how I initially start a house like this. I'm going to hot glue this cardboard box, make sure it's really solid. I've got some cereal box material here. And this is how I make corrugated metal. I'll use one of these flat rate boxes because it's really thin and it has a tight corrugation. I just peel the back off and you can see there's my corrugated iron. And then here's some seals from a coffee can lid. I thought they had interesting texture, so I'm going to give those a try. And then you want leftover toy parts or bits from other projects. And all I'm going to do is, starting at the bottom, I'm going to hot glue materials onto that basic shape. And I want to vary the materials to keep it interesting. So this is just a hobby piece of scrap wood from like a, a dollar store. This is some battery cover, which could look like some generator. It's just kind of interesting. You see I save all these parts from toys and things that I take apart. Here's some of that cardboard corrugated iron. You can see right here, this is the wheel well from some toy truck. And that's gonna frame a window here. I don't really have a plan when I start. I just have some materials and make it up as I go. This is a part from an old toaster. I'm not really measuring. I'm just cutting and dry fitting until the thing fits. So I'm gonna trim that up, test it again. And when it finally fits, I'll just shoot some hot glue in the corners and that part will be done. There's a window. So here's some old plastic card and I want to make it look like it's a piece of scrap. There's some more of that textured coffee can foil and of course cereal box card. And I'm just layering things around like somebody would in real life. Found materials. This is some part from I think it was a Star Wars toy. But it had a part that really looked like a good door, so I just hot glued that on. And then you find some pieces to do the roof or frame in the door. If you have any gaps, you just want to use some of this spackle. So when your projects uh, done being glued up, you're going to go around with a Mod Podge paint mixture. This is just Mod Podge and a little bit of ditch soap and some dark brown paint. You can use black or gray if you want. And this will just give it some extra protection and also any foam parts will be protected from your aerosol spray paint. So here's another building. The Mod Podge is dry on it and I'm going around with some toilet tissue. I want to do some tarps on the roof. So I've made some scenic glue. It's just watered down white glue with a little bit of dish soap added to break that surface tension. And I'm going around. Just put it where it seems right. Maybe you need to kind of meld two pieces together or cover an awkward spot. This is great for that. Here's another building. Made the same exact process. And this one's kind of hanging over. I just let gravity do the work as that liquid drips through it. And then when that's dry, you go back over with some more Mod Podge.
I decided after those dried that I wanted to make some brick textures. So I used a homemade hot wire and I carved some bricks into all the exposed foam. And then I wanted some rivets. So I went around with these plastic diamond dots and I put some rivets here and there to give it some more detail. And any windows you've cut in, you wanna make sure that that foam is painted well before you go and give it a base coat with aerosol spray paint. So I used some Krylon plastic spray paint in black and then I highlighted it with a cheap white spray paint, did a zenithal. And what I'm doing is I'm taking a burnt umber, a dark brown, and I'm painting anything that's wood or metal because if it's metal, it's rusty. And if it's wood, the base coat is dark brown. So once you've given it a base coat, you really start to see how cool these things look and how real they start to look. And this is just trash. A lot of these materials are free. They're parts from toys. They're pieces of paper, plastic, trash. You really start to think in 28 millimeter. You really start to think what something would be at that scale when you look at junk. These would be great for Warhammer 40K. They would be great for a Gamma World or a Mutant Crawl Classics. And you notice I don't have any base on them. So they could fit in a city, in a jungle, in a desert. What I'm doing here is I want to give all the metal parts some variety in their rust. So I'm mixing up a little bit of yellow and some burnt umber and uh, some darker browns like a raw, a raw umber. And then terracotta is my favorite for a rust color. These are all just cheap craft paints. So I've watered that down and I'm using an old brush and I'm just going around stippling. Just a random pattern, anything that's metal. Anything that's stone, I've got this medium gray and I'm gonna give it a base coat. And then I got a little bit of silver paint. I'm just gonna go around at some points and just touch it with silver. Now I've got my coffee latte color, which is a kind of a tan color. And I'm going around to all the wood and giving it a dry brush. I decided to paint this tarp on this building a dark green. I made sure I watered down the paint so that the zenithal highlight helped me. And then this part I decided to do some black and it could look like a tarp or it could look like some tar that's been painted on the roof, this loft area. And then one of the tarps I decided to try a blue. So in some of the areas, I took this latex liquid mask and I've gone around, I've just stippled. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint different colors over them. And then when I remove that latex, it'll show the rusty bits underneath. It'll have this chippy effect. So you can just wipe that latex mask off with your finger. See, this is some sort of fuel or water tank on top of one building. It has this cool effect when you remove it. Don't look at my foot. So 
So I found that a dry toothbrush works pretty well to get some of that latex mask off. And I decided I wanted to put some wood on the front of one of the buildings. My original idea was to do the wood separately and then stain it, but I ended up just painting it. So this is just some uh, PVA glue. And you can see I've built a door and a door frame and a window frame on the front of this building and up on its loft. I framed in that window a bit. It's supposed to look like people are using whatever materials they can find to build themselves a house. And I go over with a little bit of black wash. It's just black acrylic paint that's been watered down. So at that point they look pretty good. So I still need to dry brush all that wood with a coffee latte color. So I'll go back over some of the other wood that I'd already worked on a bit, touch it up again, and then I decided I want these bricks to look dustier so I use a little bit of that dry brush that coffee latte on those. And they look less like cement and more like an earthen brick. Balsa wood is great because it has this tight grain even at a small size so it shows a lot of detail once you dry brush it or wash it with something. Then I take a metallic and I take a bit of kitchen sponge and I go around and I just sort of uh, dab a few areas to show what's metal and I kind of get some corners maybe areas that would be more worn. That really sells the metal effect. It's pretty random the way I do it. And a good finishing color is this barn wood, which is a grayish tan. You don't just have to use it on wood. You can get some bricks with it. It's a good overall highlight color. Then I decide I want to do a couple of oil washes. So these are just cheap oil paints. I took a burnt umber and a burnt sienna and I take some of this odorless white spirit and I mix them together in a dish and thin them out. I'm going to try to thin them out so they're a consistency sort of like skim milk. So what I'm trying to do is have some rust that crosses between different materials sells the effect that it's been rusting there for a while. So you see this rust is dripping down and here it drips down over these bricks onto this piece of cement slab. This is not an expensive process but it really makes it look a lot cooler. And here they are, they're done. So I hope that helps you guys out. I really want to thank all my new subscribers. I've gotten over 50 subscribers. And um, if you like this sort of thing and you want to see me do more of these budget type projects, uh, please like and subscribe and share the channel.